A study done a couple years back noted how 70% of all programmers end up quitting code. And fun fact, that is equivalent to how many people lie on their resumes. Don't ask me why I said that. And in the study, they found that the main reason why people ended up quitting code was simply because it was too hard. But in my opinion, it goes way deeper than just code being hard. Like what did those 30% of people that succeeded at code do that the other 70% of people didn't? And I think I know the answer. It's not because coding was easier for those 30%. It's because they were having fun coding. Everyone experiences the exact same issues in code. Everyone runs into bugs. Everyone struggles with code in some way, shape or form. But what separates those that stick with code versus those who quit is that people who are having fun and are enjoying the process of learning are the ones that are able to stick in the long run. So it's important to realize that having fun, experiencing joy while coding is integral to the process of learning. So in this video, I'll show you three ways that you can have fun while coding so you can stick with programming for the rest of your life. Firstly is the language that you pick. The second is the goals that you set. And finally, the mindset that you have. So the first thing is to pick a language that you enjoy. Most people that I talk to, especially on Twitter, are doing languages and writing code in languages that they hate. They simply pick what is popular rather than the one that they actually wanna go into. And I experienced this firsthand with my first ever programming language. I was told by my programming friends to pick Python as my first programming language when I didn't really enjoy it. And looking back, that mistake set me back months and I actually ended up quitting code because of this mistake. It's important to realize that, that things that other people enjoy may not be for you. And for example, if you really wanna be a software developer, you have no business doing Python or maybe you wanna be a backend developer then pick something that goes with that goal of yours. Start with that goal in mind and pick accordingly. The next thing is to pick realistic goals. And I get it, right? Like a lot of us want these big audacious goals. You know, I wanted to start a billion dollar company. Maybe you want to work at Google. These are goals that we all should have and strive for. And while it's okay to have these goals and you should embrace them, it's also important to set smaller goals. By setting realistic goals, I mean have that ideal goal of you know starting a company, getting a huge tech job, making over six figures, but also have those tiny goals where it's like, where they're just easy enough to hit, but hard enough to challenge you to improve. And to set those goals, you have to be honest with yourself about where you are currently. So as a beginner, understand that you're not where you wanna be, and set goals that go along with that. So maybe you, you wanna learn JavaScript, right? Maybe one of your goals for this week will be to code a simple to-do app in JavaScript. And I know it's not like the thing you wanna hear and you wanna hear that you're gonna make it, but to make it, you have to set these tiny goals that don't make sense in the moment, but eventually will be so big and you'll have so many of these small goals completed that you end up reaching that big goal. And this helps you stick with code and makes code fun because by hitting those small goals, not only will you end up hitting that big goal of yours, but you're creating this positive feedback loop. And if you don't know what like a feedback loop is, it's simply like a dopamine rush, like a happiness thing you get when you're hitting your goals. So like for example, let's say you were able to code an application in JavaScript, your mind will wanna do that action again. So you come back the next day you'll wanna code and then you achieve something then. So your mind's like, oh damn, this is so much fun. I'm achieving stuff. I'm gonna come back the next day and I wanna code more. And you eventually just have fun coding because you're seeing yourself achieve these things. It's the people that don't do that that end up quitting because they're not seeing those hints of progress. Now the final thing is mindset. And before you click off this video because I brought up mindset, please, this might be the most important part of this video. The amount of seriousness that developers have with coding is beyond me. I know people that will literally go into a depression or freak out if they can't learn something. And honestly, like at the start of my programming journey, this was me. Like I remember once I wasn't able to do something in JavaScript and I nearly had a panic attack because I thought it was beyond me to struggle. This sort of serious mindset of like the end all be all, this, this mindset is very dangerous and I believe is the main reason why people quit. They think, oh, I'm struggling. This is not for me. I can't struggle, I'm too good for this. And that's dangerous both in code and in life. You can't have that mindset. It wasn't until I developed a mindset of acceptance and a form of student mindset where I accept that I'm not the best, but I also understand that I have to learn tough subjects in order for me to improve. And by allowing myself to fail and and learn the basics and struggle with the basics, it gave me space and time to learn, thus leading to significant improvements in the things that I was doing, thus leading to the positive feedback loop that we talked about in the previous step. And if you wanna know everything I did to learn code, check out this video on the screen.